All right, guys. Uh, I probably look like I escaped from something just now, uh, right now, because um, yeah, I'm a little bit of a mess, and I've got more hair than cousin it because I haven't gotten a haircut in a while. But anyway, I wanted to make a video that's just a quick video on some preliminary thoughts on a video I'll be making in the future. Um, obviously, one of the biggest one of the biggest arguments for evolution is that because two species share some similarities, they must therefore have a common ancestor. Uh, this argument is base is used as uh, the argument from homology. Um, and like I said, this is just a quick video. This isn't going to have a lot of editing in it, so forgive me if I misspeak or anything like that. Um, I just kind of have to upload a video right now. Uh, anyway, so we've all seen the picture in our textbooks where you have the four um, the forelimb of some creature or another. Um, you have like a human arm, a horse leg, a chimpanzee arm, a whales, fin, and some other things. They're all lined up next to each other and you see how the bone structure is very similar. And evolutionists will say, well, this is evidence for common ancestry because since they're similar, they must therefore have a common ancestor. And of course, you'll hear this argument in the form of DNA. Well, chimps and humans have 98% DNA. No, they don't. Uh, chimps actually have 12% larger, a 12% larger genome than humans do. But anyway, you hear this kind of these kind of arguments thrown around anyway but so we hear these things and we're told okay similarity is evidence for common ancestry and that's what my video that I'm working on now which is an a more of a animated video more of a slideshow like you've seen from me before is going to explain is going to talk about with people um, very often people don't realize that if you have two two creatures are similar, there's actually lots of possibilities for how that could be. That could be due to convergent evolution or convergence in the form of, um, which would be more in a creationary perspective, we would say uh, the blind cave fish, you have multiple species of cave fish, they're all blind, and this is due to convergence. But since this is a, lo a loss of a structure rather than a gain of structure, creationists would object to calling this evolution because uh, Evolution means a lot more than just change over time, even though that's how textbooks will often define evolution. But anyway, uh, we have convergence, like I've just mentioned. You can have common ancestry, and you can also have a common designer. Apple iPad and Apple iPhone have a lot of similarities between the two of them because they're both made by the same company. They're made by Apple. And so I remember once when I was taking classes at the two-year school that I came from before, which was part of the state school system, so it wasn't just your, uh, it was called the community, community college, was technically a part of the state education system. Um, anyway, I was taking some classes there, and there was one professor who said, we were talking about the universal genetic code. Um, basically, the language uh, you'd see in your DNA is pretty much universal between all living things. Um, there's tiny exception to the rule, um, so there's a slightly different uh, a slightly different version of the universal genetic code, but it's where one, like one codon means something different. Um, and this is found in certain certain microorganisms, uh, I believe it was bacteria, not archaea. Um, but I could have mistaken that. It might have been on a few archaea. It's found on a few bacteria, and it's also found in mitochondria, which is used as part of the endosymbiotic theory, if some of you have heard of that. If you haven't, don't worry about it, just keep going. But my professor said the fact that one language is used in the programming of, of all life on Earth, she's, uh, she walks away, she uh, goes, you know, if that is an evidence for evolution, then I don't know what is. And uh, I really like this professor, and thank God she was walking away, because my hand was going up. And I'm glad she didn't see my hand going up, because that might not have ended well. Um, but my response was going to be that if you have a universal genetic code, this could be the result of a universal genetic coder. Um, this could be a result of somebody writing computer code and it being the same guy. Um, if any of you, I go to a technical school right now, so my major is biotech, but there's a lot of uh, like computer technology people there, there's a lot of engineers, things like this, and one thing that's interesting that you'll learn um, 
here and there through the grapevine is that people who are who write code tend to have a certain style of how they write their code. Um, so if we have one God who wrote all of life on Earth, he wrote the code for the genetic code for all of the original creatures that existed, which were the ancestors uh, of what we see today. Now, of course, they were modified by mutation and natural selection, genetic drift, and things like this. But those few original creatures, you know, the Adam and Eve, uh, you have Adam and Eve, you would have probably the jillions of E. coli that lived back then, you have uh, maybe that original herd of elephants, things like that. Those original groups, if they were coded by one computer programmer, it makes sense that they would have all used the same code. I mean, it's really not that inconceivable. And by the way, having a slightly different version of it for smaller creatures, uh, things that have to they have to have a really compact uh, th DNA a DNA that is, has certain constraints on it that most sets of DNA doesn't have. Uh, changing the code just a little bit is actually a is actually good design. It's actually good engineering. Um, but that's a little more detail that I wanted to go in with this video. So. Um, so basically, that's what I want to talk about in a future video a little bit. I just wanted to, this video has just been a long time coming, so I wanted to give you guys kind of an update, um, just let you know where I'm at. I've made a lot of the pictures. Um, if there's anybody out there who's an artist, who's good at drawing, who would be willing to draw a few pictures for me, I would be very, very grateful. And that way I don't have to run the risk of somebody getting mad at me for using their pictures even though I'd be using them properly and legally. Um, it would be greatly appreciated. Um, but anyway, I hope that answers uh, some people's questions on homology, um, even though I'm kind of still in the process of making the video. And uh, so, anyway, uh, I guess one, one more thing before I go. I mentioned the four limbs that you see in different textbooks. Um, well, well, what a lot of people don't realize is salamanders also have a very similar forelimb. And as Jonathan Wells has pointed out, uh, there's actually, there are actually scientists who think that even though salamanders have a very similar forelimb, it actually evolved that way independently. Uh, the reason is because the embryonic pathway is totally different. Um, they have a very different embryological development, so um, it's... <sighs> It's kind of interesting that a lot of scientists think that the forelimbs of humans and the forelimbs of salamanders um, are similar because of convergent evolution. So anyway, I just wanted to leave you guys on that. If you guys have any ideas, any requests for the video, um, any ways that anything you'd like to see in it um, before I put it out there, uh, please let me know. Um, unfortunately, I was kind of, I was working on some videos for a professor um, to help educate the students on some general biology concepts, so I haven't really had time to make my YouTube videos lately. So anyway, thank you guys for your time, and thank you, and please excuse my, uh, please excuse my rambling. Um, I hope you guys have a good day. God bless, and post, comment, rate, uh, subscribe, all that other good stuff, um, and give me su just some suggestions of what you've seen with homology what you've seen with this argument that two things are similar, therefore they must have a common ancestor. Um, just post everything you think, everything you see. Also, pray for me. Um, taking an evolutionary biology class right now, and it's... I mean, the material isn't really that hard, but um, it's kind of emotionally exhausting when you want to kind of jump out of your skin to answer some of the constant objections to quote-unquote creationism. And by the way, no, they do not define creationism accurately in that class. They always, they tell people, oh, creationists think that species don't change. No, creationists do not think that species don't change. That's utter nonsense. People didn't, creationists didn't even think that in 1859. You know, read creationist literature before writing about it. 
um, or at least read on the origin of species. So you can see even Darwin acknowledged that creationists believe that species do change over time. Um, anyway, obviously there were some misunderstandings about biology back then, but people knew that things changed. They weren't that they weren't that stupid. Okay. Anyway, uh, that's enough for this video. Uh, this is Greg out. Hey Joe, did you hear this? This guy said coder. He said coder. He couldn't think of the word for programmer. He's stupid. Let's go. Let's go uh, post some comments on his channel.